So today, what's new in Terraform 012? So it's a big release. It's a big deal. Terraform 012 is what you've all been asking for. For a long, long time, I believe, maybe. But it's, 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 it's not a trivial thing for us, right? And, and I'm going to go into some of the features. And, and I think you'll appreciate some of the, the changes. And, and um, it's just awesome. Let me see if I can make this work. All right. <clears throat> so before we look at the new features in Terraform 012, let's have a bit of a recap. Let's look at why maybe we need Terraform 012. So this is kind of a typical example, right? So a very simple example. What I'm doing here is I've got a single resource. I have a count. So I'm, I'm using the metaparameter count and I've got some, some interpolation which is gonna do things like set a prefix. Absolutely nothing clever going on there. And if I run that and I apply it, it's as expected. Pretty straightforward. I can see in my output, I'm, I'm just outputting my, my pet name. But again, nothing, nothing exciting going on there. But the key thing is the Terraform configuration doesn't always look like that. It'd be wonderful if it was always that simple, but it's not. And I think to, to kind of truly appreciate where Terraform 012 is going and, and where the benefits are, we kind of need to look at something which is a little bit more complicated. So same example, but this time I've, I've decided that I need more dynamism in the configuration, right? So what have I done? Well, I've, I've decided that I, I want to add an optional prefix to my pet's name. So I've added a variable, which allows me to turn the prefix on or off. And I've decided that that prefix is gonna come from the list and the list is gonna be based on the count index. It's already starting to get a bit bit overwhelming, right? But, but even still, that's gonna work just fine. Right? I can set some TFRs, I'm gonna set my prefix, I'm gonna switch on my, my, my prefix enabler, run my Terraform apply, and it'll work. So I have all my pets, they're prefixed correctly. Now the core problem there is that what happens if I just don't want to use my prefix? What if I just want to use the defaults, well, I can't, it's gonna break. I can't do that. And the reason that I can't do that is because of the way that Terraform is gonna evaluate. So it's not doing lazy evaluation. What it's actually doing is evaluating both sides of those statements. So it's checking the default prefix and it's also checking that that element statement is gonna be valid. And in the instance that I don't actually have a list, that element statement isn't valid. So the Terraform will fail. So what do you do? You hack it, exactly, right? Who's written something like this? Anybody? Yeah? Who's proud of themselves when they write this? Nobody. But, but this is kind of one of the key things that we have to do to kind of overcome that problem when we have those defaults and those defaults are empty. Of course, with my hack, it still works, but it, it still makes me feel kind of dirty. But does Terraform more 12 fix that? Let's have a look. But first, a little history. So Terraform's been around for four years now. It was first released in 2014, and it's, it's been adopted by thousands, tens of thousands, God knows, probably millions of people across the globe are using it. And generally, it, it's kind of been pretty successfully used. You know, it's giving you that general workflow. It's giving you that ability to codify your cloud-based APIs into that declarative language. But as we've kind of seen, there's been certain limitations to the language. And, and these are, this is not news to us. You know, we, we, we do listen to our community. We love the community and we, we've listened to all of the feedback that people have been saying about how we can make these, these improvements. And actually that's what we've been doing over the last, the last year. 
So where did it come from? Why have we needed to make this change? So we've needed to make the change because of the way that Terraform was built. So Terraform is built out of two core components. You've got HCL, so that's your, your standard HashiCorp configuration language, and also HIL, so the HashiCorp interpolation language. These have always been two separate components, and this has made it really difficult to try and add new features into to, to the language. What we've done with Terraform 012 is we've, we've completely changed things from the perspective that there's a brand new language, so HCL2. Syntax, still same old, same old, as familiar as you'd like it, but from a technical perspective, we've merged HCL and HIL, and that's given us some capabilities to do and deliver the features that you've been asking for. So things like more robust types, the ability to add those kind of those language level features that mean we can avoid those nasty hacks. A huge number of improvements. I mean, literally 12 months worth of work, but things like first class expressions, and we're gonna look at those, but no more string interpolation. The ability to use four impressions, uh, four expressions for doing map and list transformation. Dynamic blocks. Yes, dynamic blocks. Generalized splat operator. No longer just when you've got a resource, if you've got a count on it, you can use splats on, on all sort of lists. Updates and improvements to the conditional operator, the types, a templating syntax, and a better JSON integration. So you've now got a, a tighter mapping between HCL2 and exact mapping between that and, and JSON, which if you're doing any automation, will probably help you a lot. So, first class expressions. What does that mean? Well, what it means is, it means that the, the sort of syntactic approach to your Terraform configuration is going to be so much cleaner. No longer are you going to have to use that dollar curly bracket approach, and no longer are you going to have to use the list function to be able to create an empty list, you're gonna be able to do things with just standard sort of syntactic approach. So again, back to, to an 011 example and earlier, gonna look like this. This is gonna be no surprise to anyone. But when you start to look at the way that Terraform 012 is gonna handle that, it now looks like this. So the, the fact that I've got that first class expression means that I don't need to do string interpolation for my variables. I can just access them directly. I could got a more rich approach to my, my type definition. <clears throat> so let's look at some other things. Back in 011, that conditional operator that we've got going there, it's pretty difficult to read. I've got to use the list function because I, I'm I need to use a, an empty list. That doesn't syntactically make a, a great deal of sort of you know, sense, but with Terraform 012, look how much it cleans it up. So again, I don't need this, the, the string interpolation. I'm just using the variables directly, and I can also just reference the list by using the, the, the square brackets as opposed to having to use a function. But this is gonna be, an enhancement that's it's quite a, sort of a lot of benefit to things like when you're building out modules, and that's the new rich value types. So no longer is it just strings, boolean. You've got a much, much more broader capability when it comes to being able to define your variables. You can have maps and lists, maps of maps, maps of lists, lists of maps, lists of maps and lists. And I think what's one of the kind of the more important things as well, which again, will we'll kind of really speak to the module developers, is that you can assign an entire resource as an output in a module. So just looking through that sort of simple example, I've, I've got a kind of a, a very simple module setup here, but I have a variable list. This is my top level configuration. I'm defining a module and I'm just passing the, the list as, a, as a, um, <clears throat> an attribute to it there. Parameter, sorry. And then I'm defining an output variable. So my output variable has to access an output variable which is defined inside of the module. 
So modules are sandboxed. You can't just go accessing the resources that are in there. You can only access what is explicitly defined by the interface. So there's inside my module, I've got my output variable referenced there. Now in Terraform 012, we can do some, some immediate things. The first thing is that I can now create complex types. So I can create here a map, and this could be some parameters, which I'm just gonna pass as a single parameter to my module. So immediately giving me a little bit more sort of capability on how I'm sort of working with my inputs and my outputs on my modules. Again, we've got that first class expression support, so I don't need to use the inter string interpolation anymore. I can directly just access my output variable from my module. And if I look at how I would define that complex type, which I just created here, then I can set this up. This is an example of how I would set up inside my TFRs. Again, trying to get a little bit more explicit, a little bit more declarative, make it possible to, to handle that sort of complex configuration. But I think for me, this is one of my key things that I'm gonna love about Terraform 012. And if you look at my output declaration there, well, I'm not referencing the VPC ID anymore because I'm actually referencing the entire resource. So that output variable will contain all of the attributes which are available on the AWS VPC, uh, which is named example there. Uh, all of the attributes. Yeah, yeah, so everything that would be available if you were accessing it as um, AWS VPC dot example dot whatever from within your module, if you assign it to an output variable, then I can access all of those things by doing module dot subnets, which is my module name, dot VPC ID, which was my output variable. And I can set, you know, I can choose the ID, the availability zone. I don't need to define all of those as individual output variables anymore, which is going to bring a lot of benefits to, to, to creating reusable modules. Yeah? Come on, you're with me on this one. You know you want this. Like, is there a single person in this room who hasn't spent time searching for a syntax error in a Terraform configuration before? Nobody, right? Nobody out on the internet either, I bet. It's not easy, but I mean, it's a real world problem. We've all had this before, right? You make a fat finger mistake, you miss off a brace, and then you've got to chase that down through all of your Terraform configuration. Of course, you, you find it eventually after you've commanded out line by line until you get to the point that you want, but it, it doesn't make it necessarily easy for you. So we changed it. How about that? Is that not a little bit better? Now you're explicitly getting the line number and the file of where the error occurred. That's gonna make it so much easier to be able to go through that sort of debugging process. Oh, and it gets better. Because what if I try and do something like this? I'm trying to add a string to a number. Now I'm gonna get a more detailed error message from Terraform. Terraform's not only gonna tell me the line where the error is, show it, error is but it's gonna give me the, the actual snippet there. And again, I'm gonna get a more detailed error message that's telling me exactly what's going on, that I'm my right-hand operator. This will be the, the, the actual, yeah, the actual file. It, I was just running this from a very simple top level. And how about that? I mean, like, I do that all the time because I am completely useless with a keyboard and I, I can't spell either. But now, you know, Terraform, we're trying to make it easier for you. We want to make the workflow faster. We want to make your life easier. And just simple things like getting those error messages that give you the direct point 
at where you need to go to change something, giving you a little bit extra help. I mean, like the amount of times I've stared at Terraform configuration and I've read output to a thousand times and not seen anything wrong with it because I'm snow blind. But the, the error messages are now giving me those helpful hints, which is, a, I think it's pretty awesome. Tons more. It's not stopping there. Four expressions. And again, you know, these, these are all the kind of the features when you start building that bigger and more complicated configuration, you want to start getting more dynamic or you want to start using more sort of complicated and, and sort of uh, dependencies between your configurations. We're introducing four expressions. So four as, a, as, a, as an operator is going to allow you to do transformations on lists and maps. For each is going to allow you to do iteration over dynamic nested blocks. Did I say, did, did, I, did somebody just say dynamic blocks? Yeah, they did. Let's take a look. So you could do this in 011. If you wanted to do some sort of uh, transformation of, of a key and a value into a, a map, you can use some of the, the interpolation functions. It's pretty difficult to read. It's fairly limited. And if you want to start doing things like add conditional elements to that, it's an absolute nightmare. But in Terraform 012, then what you can do is use the new for operator. So this is going to produce me a map. So for my, uh, all of my instances of AWS named example, I can loop over them and I can produce a map where the key is going to be the ID of the instance and the value is going to be the, the private IP. I don't have an example in this slide, but you can also put an if statement in there. So you can actually add a conditional operator that will omit the, the, the map um, based on a certain condition, which is kind of pretty cool. Output, as you would expect, straightforward map. This one though, having to have those repetitive blocks. So tagging is probably the most common example of that. I mean, having to add things like tags to your auto scale group, to your environments, to your instances. If you're using multiple tags and you have to declare those blocks every time, even if you have a list of those values, you've still got to explicitly declare them. And it's just a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. But when we look at how Terraform 12 O12 oh, is going to handle that, then we can use that dynamic block. So look at the syntax there now. I'm in my standard resource, but I'm using this new operator keyword, dynamic. And I'm specifying that I want to create a dynamic element called tag. And the number of those dynamic elements is going to be dependent upon the items in my collection there. So I'm using a for each. And then I can specify my, my content for it. So my, if you look at my local variable up at the top there, I have my, my standard tags. And then with my dynamic, I'm going to loop over that, that map, and I'm going to automatically add those configuration elements to my resource. Pretty dope. I think so. But back to our example. This, our proudest work. This is a real problem, right? And, and actually, it's a, it's a problem that exists beyond this context. I mean, having to, if you've got a count on an object and you want to specify it as an output, if you're using like count to switch things on and off, you, you run into this, this kind of a, a syntax approach everywhere. And it's just really, really difficult to read. And this is the key thing, you know, you're trying to create this declarative configuration, this self-documenting infrastructure. And if you've got complexities, if you've got things which are awkward and difficult to read, then it kind of defeats the purpose. So we improved it. Let's have a look at that exact same example, but let's see how HCL2 handles it. Like this. I think that's a lot more elegant, right? 
I don't need to do any handling, special handling for, for the fact that my list could or could not be empty because now we've got lazy evaluation in conditionals. And that's going to allow you to clean up your configuration so much. Again, though, look at the fact that you've got that ability to dynamically reference those elements. You don't have to use the string interpolation anymore. Again, just so much clearer, so much more readable. Of course, if I run it, it still works the same, which is kind of cool. So what does it mean? I mean, I can't sort of stress how much work has gone into making the changes to, to Terraform uh, 0.12 and, and to implementing the HCL2 language. I can't take credit for it. The, the, the team have done incredible work in being able to kind of work through this over the last 12 months. And, and we're, you know, we're nearly there. You can play with the alphas today. You can check your Terraform configurations to see how they're going to behave and what changes are going to be needed to be, to be made in Terraform 012. You can get them on releases. We're in currently in alpha four. Where we're also going with this is that we're going to have tooling built into Terraform when we, we finally get into the sort of the production releases, which is going to be able to upgrade your configuration for you. It's going to be automatically going to be able to change any of the syntax that needs to be changed. And it'll do that for you, which is a, a pretty big bonus. We really think that, you know, it's going to give you that capability. It's going to mean that you don't need to have those hacks anymore. You don't need to have that difficult to read syntax and configuration. You're going to be able to create that config, which is as it should be. It should be re easy to read. It should be easy to understand. And you're going to have the capability of creating a more consistent and predictable approach when you're starting to build out the various and using the functions. Modules, you're absolutely going to love it because it means that it changes the way that you're going to be able to define interfaces for modules. You're going to make them so much more flexible for, for the consumers. Now, I want to give a, a big thank you and shout out, I don't know if she's watching, but to, um, to Kristen from I plagiarized a lot of her slide deck. I'm not proud. How do you change perfection, right? Kristen did a great job on those things. And I also want to sort of kind of speak a little bit about the, the CFPs um, for HashiConf. So HashiConf is coming up. It's going to be this summer in Amsterdam. And CFPs are open for that. They're going to be closing in 15 days. So don't do what I would do. If you're thinking about submitting a CFP, submit it early. <clears throat> not at two minutes to the closing date that I'm probably going to do it with CFP with Chinese to submit tomorrow. Sorry, KubeCon. And also HashiConf USA. The CFP closing date is, is 2nd of April on there. So again, you know, please, if I think what we've seen today from Hashi Talks is that there's been some fantastic community talks. We'd love to see you live in person giving a talk at one of the events. Our diversity scholarships are also open for both of those events, and you can find all of the details on the, the HashiCorp website. And I'm finishing up a little bit early, but I, I do want to say thank you so much for putting up with me and listening to me. And thank you to everybody who's attended Hashi Talks today. It's the first time we've done this, and um, Everybody in the room and everybody out in the world there, we, we really appreciate everything you've done. All of the people who've prepared talks and all of the people who've enjoyed the talks and watched them. If you have any questions, please just blast me an email and yeah, thank you. <laughs>